Hey friends, good afternoon. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for today and all the blessings you've given us. Please, uh, as we study your word today and as we turn to you, please turn to us and lend your ear and lend your spirit that you would hear us and that you would bless us and inspire us the same way you inspired the original writers. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, we're going to continue with uh, Galatians 4, verses 21 and following. We might get all the way through the whole chapter, um, but I want us to go back to verse 20. Uh, Paul says, But I, I wish I could be present with you now and change my tone, for I am perplexed, uh, perplexed about you. Then in 21, Paul begins to ask some rhetorical questions. And and this is to, and it's always funny when you read a question in the Bible, especially when it's it's God in the Old Testament and Jesus in the New Testament. And now here, if if we are going to believe that Paul was inspired by the Holy Spirit, and I do, then could we say that the Holy Spirit is asking questions through Paul's pen? I, I think it would be safe to assume that. So if you look at, say, Adam and Eve after they sinned and God walks along in the garden and says, Adam, where are you? Do you really think God didn't know where Adam was? So you, you jump forward to Jesus uh, and, and the woman <clears throat> that, that walks up behind Jesus and touches the tassel, uh, the, the woman that had been bleeding, and she, she tells herself, oh, if I could just touch him, I would be healed. And she touched him, and Jesus turns around and says, well, who touched me? Do you really think Jesus didn't know who touched him? And, and now here's Paul, after presenting the gospel, presumably baptizing the, the Galatian people, m more importantly, the Holy Spirit baptizing the Galatian people, the people in Galatia. And, and then Paul that leaves, Paul goes, continues on his missionary journeys, and then people come back behind Paul and they're preaching this perverted gospel that, that we've heard so much about in the first couple of chapters. And, and then apparently Paul must have gotten a letter or someone told him about it. So now we're actually getting to a portion of the letter where Paul is going to begin to ask questions. Paul's not looking for information I, if I ask you a question today, right now, you wouldn't be able to answer me. You could answer me later on in the comments, but you wouldn't be able to, to answer me right now. So it, it, Paul is not particularly looking for information. Paul, just like God did with Adam and Eve, and just like Jesus did with that particular woman that touched him, Paul is trying to do the same thing. He's trying to get these people to look at themselves and say, wow, Adam and Eve, wow, where am I? Look at me. I have run from the God that I should have run to. Jesus turns around, who touched me? That woman had to think in herself, gosh, that was a bold move. I snuck up behind the Messiah and touched him. Well, now Paul is going to begin to ask a series of questions. And the first one is in, in verse 21. Tell me, you who want to be under the law, do you not listen to the law? Now, that's just his first question. And Paul's going to lay out some of the law here. For it was written that Abraham had two sons, one by the bondwoman and one by the free. But the son by the bondwoman was born according to the flesh. The son by the free woman through the promise. This is allegorically speaking, for these women are two covenants. One proceeding from Mount Sinai bearing children who are to be slaves. She is Hagar. Now this Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia and corresponds to the present Jerusalem for she is in slavery with her children. 
Now we've got to hear a change in context as these new words come, these next words. But the Jerusalem above is free and she is our mother. So Paul points to the Jerusalem that's there, the home of the temple. Uh, the uh, It's funny that the, the temple was the, the political center of Israel. It was the financial center of Israel, and it was the religious center of Israel. I wonder what kind of a town we could have today if church was the center of all three of those areas of, of one's life. Okay, I went to preaching. Um, so Paul is pointing at the, the Jerusalem of that day. I started to say modern day Jerusalem. But the Jerusalem of his day, when people were literally bound to the temple, the business, religion, and politics all were right there centered at the temple. So, they were bound to it. They were slaves to it. Just, just like Hagar and Ishmael, they were earthly. This is of the flesh. Verse 26, but the Jerusalem above is free. The heavenly Jerusalem. And I, I believe what Paul is trying to do here is uh, in the Holy of Holies, where the mercy seat was and the Ark of the Covenant, these were mere shadows. These were images that were created by human hands that were to represent what's actually in heaven. A and this was just the best God could do through us. This was the best we could do here on earth. But in heaven was the true mercy seat. In heaven is the true Ark of the Covenant. In heaven, in the New Jerusalem, to use John's language from Revelation. So, Paul is not trying to get people to look particularly at the Jerusalem of his day. Paul was trying to get people to look to heaven for the promises from God. It's really simple. We can live a spiritual life or we can live a physical life. It's, it's just that simple. So, Paul continues, uh, The Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, barren woman who does not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not in labor. For more numerous are the children of the desolate than of the one who has a husband. Now, that's found in Isaiah 54 verse 1 but he continued Paul continues through verse 28 and brethren like Isaac are children of promise and you brethren like Isaac are children of a promise uh, I, I heard it said one time all of the prophecies that Jesus fulfilled uh that, that Jesus is the Messiah. If you took a two-foot wall around the whole state of Texas and filled it with quarters and took a quarter and a Sharpie and you made an X on the back of one of those quarters and threw it out as far as you could and you got a blind guy and said, go out there and find that one quarter that we put the X on. The chances that this guy could find the quarter are the same chances that Jesus is not the Messiah. That's a pretty drastic chance. I, I bet I get hit by lightning before that blind guy finds that quarter. So, here we have Paul telling us that God is fulfilling these promises even in us through Jesus Christ. So, if, if we can believe, if we can have faith, that we are the fulfillment of those promises, then we'll be a lot better off. 
But what the Galatians were trying to do was turn back to the law. They were trying to turn back to their slavery to sin and death. Um, in verse 29, Paul says, But as at that time he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the Spirit, so it is also written, um, I'm sorry, so it is now also. So those that are bound by the law, those that are bound by sin and death, are still coming after the Christians in the times of the Galatians. And, and even today, look at, we're not persecuted, but we're kind of getting, there's some pushback on religion right now. So verse 30, but what does the scripture say? Cast out the bondwoman and her sir and her son. Now that's Genesis twenty one ten, and then for the bond son of the bond. I'm sorry, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be an heir with the son of the free woman. That's God saying that in Genesis twenty one twelve. God told Abraham, and and it's it's. At best, it's murky. Sarah wanted Hagar and Ishmael gone. God did not. God did not want to break up the family. Hmm. So, God told Abraham that the son of the bondwoman will not be an heir with the son of the free woman. <clears throat> so, one's a slave... And one is a son. Y'all remember what I said about that the other day? The son always has a room in the house. The slave might have to sleep out in the shed. Just remember that. Um, so then, brethren, we are not children of a bondwoman, but of the free woman. Now, there's a chapter break here, and I disagree that those that have listened to me at Dresden and Pleasant Valley and Shady Grove, uh, even all the way back to Quito, back way early when I started in the ministry, it, we have put chapter breaks and verses, verse numbers in places that they don't particularly need to be. Because chapter 5, verse 1 says this, It was for freedom that Christ set us free, Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. See, that 31, chapter 4, verse 31, and chapter 5, verse 1 go together. I, I read them both together and, and you can hear it. So then, brethren, we are not children of a bondwoman, but of the free woman. It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to the yoke of slavery. There are two paths, light and dark. Paul is giving us free and slavery. Paul is trying to get the Galatians, don't go back to your slave ways. Don't go back to your old ways. Don't go back to the old idols that are meaningless. Stay with the gospel that I proclaimed you. That's what Paul's saying. Um, I I have an appointment this afternoon, friends. So I'm I'm. Let's leave it right here for right now, and we'll pick this up again tomorrow. Uh, comments down below, questions down below. Uh, I'm I'm always open. If you don't have my number, somebody here in the Dresden community does. Call them and then call me and we can talk. Come by the office, we'll have some coffee. Come by the parsonage, we'll have some tea. Madra makes a really good fruit tea that, that's real good. Uh, so with that, I bid you blessings, friends.